Huge news coming out of ETH Denver. This really does change the game for the entire NFT ecosystem. A new standard was announced for our wallets, ERC4337, and we are going to tell you all about that and more and why it is fundamental to changing the masses, to bringing on the masses into the NFT ecosystem. It does all the things that we have been complaining about and more. And I think it's going to bring in a flood storm, open the floodgates for people to be collecting NFTs uh, and making it much easier, for, much easier for everyone to use. So we're going to cover that and more. But first, before we get into that, welcome to Goats and the Metaverse. I am here with my good friend and esteemed colleague, Stanley. How are you, my friend? That's my favorite thing about the show. Uh, I am doing terrific uh big news i'm excited about and just to tease a little alpha we have some big news coming up that we're going to be we revealing do. next week it is going to be huge so you do not want to miss this make sure you smash that subscribe button and set a reminder because next week we are dropping major 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 alpha that might benefit you some doulares uh so make sure you check in with us next week. Uh, yeah, big news. Lots of things happening. Let's get right into it. To the videotape. Boom. To the videotape. $1,556. Solana is a little bit down. And ApeCoin is dumping. Why is ApeCoin dumping? What is going on, Yossi? What is going on? Hey. ApeCoin is uh, dumping because there is uh, a lot of the lockups are uh, ending. So people are getting access to their Ape uh, and, uh, and selling. Also, a lot of the rewards in kind of staking your ApeCoin has started to slow down. Um, so, you know, there's just some sell side pressure happening on the ApeCoin side of things, which was to be expected uh, in that ecosystem. Uh, Big news out of Yuga, they did a ordinals drop on the Bitcoin chain, and we covered ordinals in one of our previous shows. Uh, they did a generative drop, $16.5 million in sales, 288 pieces uh, were sold, the kind of lowest collection or smallest collection that came out of Yuga. Uh, pretty successful for that. So we're going to continue to monitor the Bitcoin ordinals chain uh, and, and see what is coming out in the NFT world. Don't sleep on Bitcoin ordinals is my message. Ooh, hashtag not financial advice, but do not sleep on those. And what about our shiny JPEGs? Where are we at with those? Uh, mixed bag, a little green, a little red. Uh, v Friends actually dropped tickets yesterday. I think the price was closer to five. Uh, and then people started dumping their V Friends because I guess they got their tickets uh not a lot of movement or not a lot of big movement uh kind of all across the board we're seeing a little down a little bit up but there's still movement right there's still things happening there's still people buying uh there's still i see code is getting swept i mean there 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 are things happening it is just not what it used to be and i believe this is the new norm but uh, from what I understand, there's still lots of monies to be made and people are trading on Blur, earning those rewards, and they are grinding. They are grinding. We are seeing a lot of punks volume happening on Blur uh, to earn, earn those rewards. We also saw the announcements out of Moonbirds uh, and everything to come out of that. I must say it was a little disappointing as the announcement came out uh, from that, turning into a kind of NFT art collection community, very similar to what Proof Benefits are getting uh, out of the Moonbirds. Market didn't really respond overly positive uh, on the Moonbirds. Uh, if you were someone who maybe bought a Moonbird at like 30 E, uh, you may be wondering if uh, you're ever going to get to those kind of numbers again. You're not. Uh, but if Sorry. you are an <laughs> NFT collector and uh, if you are an art collector and an art enthusiast, uh, maybe an entry point at some point. I'd probably wait to see that going down to about 3 E before I enter into the Moonbirds community. Uh, and I think it is on that trajectory, unfortunately, for the holders. Uh, or maybe we'll see some big things coming out of Kevin Rose in the time ahead. Um, but let's get on to the main title of the show. Uh, what happened at ETH Denver? A big announcement came 
from the main stage, something that Vitalik had spoken about in September of last year. It was announced on the 1st of March, a new standard for wallets. Uh, ERC4337 is the uh, name for the proposal. And uh, it's pretty big. St Stanley, do you want to tell us a bit about it? I'll give you like the, the 30, 45, 50,000 view scope. Uh, basically, it is now going to be a lot easier for you to own an NFT. Uh, I think the main big thing over here is that you could buy multiple NFTs. Uh, you could actually lose your access to your wallet and get it back. Um, it is now going to be a lot more accessible and easier for you to own an NFT. Um, I think that is the best news to come out of it, right? Uh, there's a lot more use cases, like for example, the one I saw, which I think makes a lot of sense. Now you could have recurring charges, right? So if you have a Netflix account and you want to pay with uh, with crypto, you could set it, you know you could set it where monthly it gets taken out of your account. What does that mean for NFTs or what does that mean for for Web3? Well, if you're creating some sort of subscription service that is Web3 forward and friendly, you can now charge people a monthly a monthly price, a monthly subscription, which we will definitely see coming out. Uh, it is it is now like e-commerce brands are probably thinking how do we incorporate NFTs? How do we incorporate these rewards programs? How do we start continuing to build on top of the blockchain technology, which is the future? It makes it a lot easier and a lot friendlier. Yasi, go into the nitty gritty details and explain to the folks, what does it actually mean? The nitty gritty details of ERC4337 is that it is a new standard for a wallet. For if anyone has interacted with a wallet, you know that your private keys is core to the system. And if you lose your private keys, you lose access to your wallet. Uh, it can be pretty scary if you're trying to be your own bank and there is kind of one place where everything can fall down. What ERC4337 is trying to do is change that paradigm. It is turning your wallet into a smart contract. I won't go into the technicalities of that, but basically that what that means is that you can now program this smart contract like you've been able to do uh, with other things on Ethereum, and that allows you to do new functionality into that wallet. One of those can be recovering your lost private keys through a social contract. So you can maybe elect three people uh, or four people and say that if for whatever reason I lose my private keys, two people can sign an, a, a, a transaction to give me access back to my wallet. Um, you can secure those wallets without a seed phrase, uh, which makes a huge difference of not being able to store something now. You've got this 24-word seed phrase that is uh, stored under your uh, under your bed. That, is that uh, where yours is? Now we, know. In. now we know where it is. <laughs> not giving away any secrets on where my seed phrase is, uh, but you've got a couple of million dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars on that document that is a vulnerability, and this takes that away. You mentioned the ability uh, to have subscriptions. You can also have automated trading with sp with spending limits. So, you know, I can only buy $1,000 of NFTs this month and the wallet will not allow me to buy any more. Uh, that will be something very good for me because I do have a bit of a spending habit. Uh, <laughs> and something that's quite huge is a cashless transactions. Uh, we haven't been able to see that happen easily to date. And what that means is that uh, a brand, let's use Nike as an example, could do a NFT claim or an NFT drop uh, and make it completely free, that you don't actually even pay for the gas of the transaction. That's been a big barrier to people entering into the space to date. Uh, so pretty huge changes in how we can think about a wallet, uh, all of that without having to have a trusted third party. The reason you've got that in Web2 is you have a bank or you have a processor who can reset your account, who can reset your uh, access uh, and that gave you that benefit, but also created huge risk and vulnerabilities because now someone has access to your account or to your uh, to your funds. Here, no one still has access to your account and funds, but you have these abilities to make uh, recovery, to be able to secure it, uh, and to have all that benefit without a trusted third party. It's huge, and I think it will greatly simplify the ability for people to uh, transact on these networks, not only in NFTs, but in crypto, and see that you know, hundreds of thousands of people are going to start coming on board because this is what they expect coming from the Web2 world. Absolutely. And we, we saw also earlier this week that Amazon announced that they're creating their own NFT marketplace. 
Um, and here you go, right? You have all these big, big, big monsters who have been talking that they're coming into Web3. And they're kind of been slow, you know, to the punch. They, they've been very, very slow to get in. But as the technology continues to evolve, you know, these guys are ready. They're, they're, they're building, they're, they're thinking about Web3. They believe in it. They believe this is the future. And I think this is a step in the right direction because as soon as your average Joe starts to feel more comfortable about interacting and, and you know, buying something using crypto or whatever the case may be and is not worried about security and safety, um, now it becomes the norm. I mean, I'm assuming back in the day when, you know, you had to get on a call with your bank and tell them your social security number and you're like, you know, how do I trust you? How do I know who you are? How, you, how do I know you're not going to steal my information? But now we do it every day, right? In order to verify our account. We have to give them the last four of our or our full social security number. And we do it without thinking twice about it. So, you know, as the technology continues to evolve uh, and people do become more open to the idea of interacting with Web3 and it, it becomes simpler, like you said, uh, more and more people are going to come on board and more and more people are going to tell their friends. And all of a sudden we're interacting in web3 on a daily basis and we don't need we didn't even know it right and i think you and i have been talking about that for the last year that this is yeah, coming the future we don't know what the form is but it it's going to be here to stay and it is an exciting time very exciting time maybe even moonbirds will go up in price you never know crazier things could happen uh, and that is that is everything about erc 4337 uh, really uh, excited about it since to start seeing being implemented uh, and as Stanley said I am also really excited about what we are going to tell you next week we have been planning a lot of cool things to reward our loyal fans and community uh, a reminder we have our goat vaults uh, it is our giveaway we are almost there we are almost at that 5,000 subscriber mark uh, smash, smash that up. like button smash that subscribe button Goat Vault valued at over $13,000 today, and you could be winning some shiny NFTs in that vault. All you have to do is be a loyal fan of the show. And you do not want to miss Monday's show because there do is not want to miss coming it. your way. Hope you all enjoyed it and have a great day. We'll see you all soon.